Hey, what's going on, guys? My name's Sana, and welcome to Crypto Bible. Hope you are all very well after yesterday's antics in the market. Um, I kind of just wanted to do an update video from my live stream yesterday. If you guys have not seen the live stream, please make sure to go and watch it. Um, we basically went through everything uh, regarding the dip that's been happening. Um, we've looked back in history to find whether or not uh, this has happened before, which it, it has um, at this stage as well. So there was quite a few good things that we were seeing yesterday. And it's also a dip that we were expecting. I mean, the past few uh, chart videos I'd done, just regular videos I posted on my channel last week, um, all of them were literally talking about how I believe a dip was coming. And, um, you know, thankfully we've got it. But in this video, I kind of just want to dive into it and see whether or not we have actually, you know, hit the bottom of our dip and whether or not we can kind of just carry on going upwards now. Um, something did happen overnight, which is something that I wanted to see. But I just wanted to discuss it with you and show you exactly what I'm seeing right now. So in regards to Bitcoin, the stuff that we were looking out for was for it to come back down into this area right here, which thankfully it actually has done. This is the area that we were targeting. I was saying between uh, 40,000 and 41,000, we got right there at $40,200. Um, so this is the area that we were looking to come down into, which is which is excellent, right? This is exactly what we were looking for. Um, but there was just a few things missing, right? And I just kind of want to build a, a bit of a story for you guys in this video. So. Right here, exactly what we were looking for, it came back down to this area, and yes, we had a huge bounce out of there. In fact, it bounced about $2,000 straight away. The only issue that I had with this was that usually when reversals come in, I've said it before, we tend to see some big buy volume coming in right after. And as you can see, the sell volume completely exceeded the buy volume from Bitcoin. In fact, this buy volume that we got over here, which was earlier in the day, which would have been this little green candle right here, it was actually bigger than our uh, buy candle right here after we bottomed out. So it was quite interesting to see. And literally, no matter what time frame you're looking at it from, um, it doesn't really look that convincing. Again, that buy volume from earlier in the day was a lot bigger. Yeah, we did end up capitulating a little bit more, which is what I wanted to see. But it has not been followed up by big buy volume. Um, the only buy volume that shows up is on the hourly chart because after that, uh, it just kind of ended up going sideways again. Now, we are ever so slightly grinding up. Whether or not you want to call it grinding, I don't know. Um, but it's quite frustrating to see. So, again, it's extremely confusing because, firstly, we did see what we wanted in the sense that we've come back down into this area and we did get a very big bounce out of there. I mean, without even looking at the volume, me seeing this and looking to see this kind of um, support over here, I'd have been happy with that, right? Because it's what we it's what we wanted. It's just that buy, that buy volume is making me question things. But then we move over to the total altcoin market cap, right? And I haven't touched this chart ever since yesterday's live stream. So I've left it exactly how it is. And once again, we were looking for the total altcoin market cap to come back down into this area to complete the C leg, right? So you got your A, you got your B, which would have retraced back to the 0.702 right there as you can see pinpoint back to the 702 and then you want your c wave to come back down into this area here now the only wave that the c uh, the only way that the c leg would be valid is if it actually comes below um the a leg right and it has because if i just move this up right here you can see that we have come below a but we have not come down into this area so what area did it come back down to well if i just move this up a little bit like that you can see where C came back into. If I remove this right here, you can see that it actually came and found some support on top of this level right here, which would have been the level where we have, you know, originally capitulated and then retraced back into before we started consolidating for a long time. You can see that right there, that candle right there. And it also ended up finding some resistance right there as well. So that is where we have come back down into. Now, Again, it's extremely confusing because what we were expecting, because what Bitcoin ended up doing, Bitcoin did come back down into this area, right? And it looks really good, but with no buy volume. However, it did have a big bounce. Whereas with the total altcoin market cap, it didn't come back into this area. However, it did come back and touch this and it remains valid because it's still below the A leg, okay? So whatever, whenever you are doing an ABC correction, Ideally, what you're looking for, this would be your A, your B, 
and then you want your C to just simply come anywhere below A. And what would have made sense is for us to come back down here into these levels here, because that is literally what Bitcoin done. It came back down into these support levels here. Whereas if you're looking at Bitcoin compared to the total altcoin market cap, the total altcoin market cap would have been up here still. Um, however, like I said, it's very difficult to say exactly what's going on here because, again, it still did come below the A leg and it still did come back down into an area um, where there is some kind of support. It's just looking at Bitcoin and Bitcoin did come down a little bit more. If you take a look at something like Ethereum, it did also do something very similar uh, to Bitcoin in the sense that we did come back down into these areas right here. And also with Ethereum, it's done exactly what I would have wanted. Um, very similar to the total altcoin market cap in regards to an A, B, C and the C coming back down into this support area right here. So um, very confusing stuff. But, you know, it's, uh, I cannot sit here and say with full conviction um, that this dip is 100 percent in. I'm seeing signs that it is. If we take everything off here and actually zoom into Ethereum, what are you seeing here with Ethereum now? Well, the buy volume with Ethereum is exceeding the sell volume, okay? And it also completed a C leg back into important um, support areas with buy volume. So everything on Ethereum is shouting to me that the dip is in, okay? Because that's exactly what I wanted to see, the ABC back into this area with some buy volume. What you've got with Bitcoin is an ABC back into this area with no buy volume. And what you've got with a total altcoin market cap is an ABC back into an area which is further up than Ethereum and Bitcoin um, with the C leg being completely valid because it's coming below the A. So, yeah, very difficult stuff. But um, what else can we take from it? What else can we take a look at and show that the dip could potentially be in? Because, again, if I saw this chart without looking at the volume, I would probably say that it's in, okay? And it has come back down into the area that we were speaking about for ages. Well, one thing that I've been very reliant on that's been telling me that the final dip is in, I've always been taking a look at something like the relative strength index on the four hour chart. It's always been very accurate for me anyway. And we can see that every time we do come below 30 on the relative strength index, we do have a big pop back to the upside, right? And I've mentioned this so many times in my videos, okay? So if we come and look at something like this dip that we had just a few weeks ago, you can see that we did dip below 30 on the relative strength index, and that was indeed our bottom until we ended up grinding back up. Now we've capitulated again, okay? And we have not been this low since this dip right over here. And this dip was our initial top with our capitulation, right? So if I'm looking at this from the relative strength index point of view on the four hour chart, this chart is very oversold and it shows me that sellers are exhausted. OK, so to me, this shows that the bottom is in. Um, and if it's not, I would be pretty surprised. Um, you know, obviously, it's crypto. Nothing surprises you. But this does show that it is very oversold. If you're looking at it from the daily chart, um, as you can see, we have come back below uh, our initial capitulation on the 7th of September. So we're even below that on the daily chart right now. We're back in areas that we were over here, uh, which would have been on the 17th of July. And on the 17th of July was a few days just before we had our big capitulation before we found our actual bottom, right? So we are showing oversold on the RSI. Uh, we have come back into very important support areas. You know, it's what I was expecting, forty to $41,000. Um, so it's looking good in that sense. The only question mark is why was there not a lot of buy volume coming in? But then you look elsewhere in the market like Ethereum, you know, and there was buy volume coming in. Um, so let's look elsewhere just to see if we can get any more confirmation. I'll take a look at something like XRP. Um, this was a very big support area for XRP, right? Chilling at 88, 87 cents. Um, you can see this was where we where we bounced from massively. And it was also an area where once we actually ended up breaking it, we did capitulate further until coming back above it. You can see that big wick that took us back above it. And we've been bouncing on top of this level for two days. Um, so even in XRP's case, it's come back down into an area where, you know, you'd be expecting it to hold. You'd be wanting it to hold in a very important area as well. And it has done that. Um, so again, when you're looking at XRP, you know, to me, does it shout that this dip is in? Again, back into a very important area. But the problem with XRP, just like Bitcoin, 
buy volume. It's just it's just not there. This is very unusual to me. There's very weird things going on in this market. So um, again, I can't say with full conviction that a dip isn't. What we are seeing though elsewhere in the market is a coin like OMG literally making some crazy moves. You could, I mean, buy volume literally is not a problem for that at all. You can see it has exceeded the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement as well. And it does not care about anything else going on in the market. So are we seeing an early leader in the market showing that this dip is fully in and now we can just start grinding our way up? I don't know, but it has not showed any signs of weakness. It's just been going. And um, you don't really see that if things are really bearish, right? So that's a good sign. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to end off end off the video with one more good sign, right? We know that every single time things are uh, looking really bad, um, the world seems like it's ending or whatever it may be, there's always bad news that comes with it. And um, I was going to do some news videos, but I thought I'd actually tie into this video because what we're seeing today is a whole bunch of bad news. You've got Bloody Monday, yesterday's Bitcoin sell-off saw record 1.6 billion in liquidations. Turkey is at war with cryptocurrency, says President Erdogan. 60 cryptocurrency exchanges in South Korea to shut down all or some services this week. And then Binance to end crypto derivatives in Australia by December. And I just find it you know, very weird that we've got a whole bunch of bad news coming out just as we're getting this huge dip, right? And you would never see amazing news come out whenever we're having a big dip. You know, this is, the, this is the first thing that I keep telling people ever since I made the channel. I keep saying whenever things are bad, all you'll get is bad news. You will not get another country saying that Bitcoin's uh, now a legal tender in their country when, you know, Bitcoin's just had a 10 percent drop in a day. Um, it's very difficult. To, to do that right so um it's good to see that there's a lot of bad news coming out because usually that would be when the sentiment does end up changing um so i found that pretty interesting and one thing that i just actually wanted to end on um which i showed in my live stream yesterday which i found pretty interesting right was if we actually go back to the 2017 bull run right just before we ended up topping out you guys can see that we did actually have a bit of a capitulation phase right here if i go over to the um usdt the binance chart it actually shows it a little bit better that's the one that i've been looking at um in 2017 so over here what you can see and where i believe we are is around this area right here obviously none of this is financial advice or anything like that but what i noticed is that just before the big blow off top because in this area here is where alt season you know really got going around this area right here but what you can see is that before this we actually had a big dip in the market okay and when you look at that dip from a percentage standpoint it's actually a 24 percent dip okay so when you're looking at that and you say to yourself right what are we doing right now well, if we go over to where we are right now and we take a look at this dip that we have just also had from our top, how far down does that take us? It also takes us down 24%. Um, so it's like another sign that I'm seeing that, the, you know, the bottom is potentially in. But as I said, I cannot say with full confidence that it is. I'm just seeing some indicators that show me it is. Some indicators are showing me that. Not, not that it's not, but I don't know. It's very difficult to judge. We need more time. But I'm glad we have come back down into this era because one thing I can say with some kind of confidence is that if this bottom isn't in yet, there wouldn't be that much further down to go um, if it's not. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. And then um, just finally, guys, this Binance to end crypto derivatives in Australia uh, by December um, and also this right here, uh, Bitcoin sell off saw record 1.6 billion in liquidations. I thought it'd be a good time to just introduce this website. It's got nothing to do with me. It's actually from Binance. It's actually a leverage calculator. For those of you guys that, you know, like to trade leverage, again, it's not something that I recommend doing. Um, but this would actually show you uh, how much you're leveraging, what your liquidation prices could be. You've just got to input all of the data in here um, and it will show you everything. So your profit and loss, if you click here to liquidation price, you could put in what your entry price was, how much of that coin you brought, and your um, futures USDT balance, click calculate, and it will tell you your liquidation price. So before you enter a trade in this ridiculously volatile market, guys, um, I would recommend just going on that if you want to. I'll leave it in the link in the description. Again, I do not recommend people do leverage trade. It's very dodgy, um, and you can lose all your money. So if you're going to do it, please just 
be sure to cover your back and at least use this calculator to know what you're getting into, to understand and study your risk before you go into it. Okay, so I thought I'd just end it off on that because there's been a lot of liquidations going on recently and I want people to be safe with it. So use it, link in the description, okay? Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys probably for a live stream later today. Take it easy, people.